the Black Knights, Jeff Monkey. We're certainly disappointed uh, that we lost the game. I thought our guys fought tremendously hard. I'm really proud of their effort. We just didn't make enough plays to, to win the football game. And credit to Navy, they've got a really good football team. Such a well-coached football team. And, uh, and they, they made the plays when they needed to to win the football game. And that's the bottom line of the game. But then it's certainly disappointing to uh, to have played as hard as we did and just uh, not be able to see our guys be rewarded with victory, particularly our seniors. I'm, I'm most disappointed for them to, uh, to not uh, have, a, have a chance to experience a victory in this great rivalry. And it is a great game. And, uh, just a tremendous crowd and, and really special to be a part of it. It's just an honor and privilege for me to be a part of this rivalry again and, and to, to represent West Point, which I think is one of the finest academic institutions in the world, and uh, the best leadership laboratory on the face of the earth, and the whole leadership position, to be able to lead these men, more than lead other men and women, uh, what a responsibility and, and what a privilege for me, and I'm uh, so proud of them, just the way they fought, uh, told our team we got contribution, uh, and it's, uh, it, it, it stinks, and it's been hurt for a long time, and uh, It'll pain us until we have an opportunity to, to play again and to try to do something about it next year. But, uh, these guys fall really hard. And, uh, four guys sitting up here in front of you today, four great kids. Uh, all four are going to be great soldiers. And uh, all four really good players. So open it up for questions. Please state your name and organization before you're asked your question to coach. Go ahead. Uh, Peter Schmuck with Baltimore Sun. Coach, uh, just a uh, Looking forward, I know it's tough to have to send the seniors off without having a chance to be able to beat, to beat Navy at least once. Um, the foundation you've laid this year in your first year, how do you feel going forward about the program and where it's headed? Well, I'm excited about the future of this program. And uh, I didn't, uh, I wasn't delusional in thinking that everything was going to change at the snap of a finger or when I walked in the room and said, hey, here, here, here's the changes we're going to make. Those things take time. And it takes more than just a season. It takes building a program from the bottom up and, 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 and getting the philosophy and the culture um, where I feel it needs to be to be a championship football program. I think we're, I think we're well on our way, but, uh, but we haven't gotten there yet. And, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely confident that we will. Go ahead, Ron. Coach, not every game has a definitive turning point. But I believe, I would think that this one was with the fourth and one that you missed the end of the second floor, and then coming right back down. What do you think? Yeah, it's the second time this year. We've got fourth and that far to go, and don't make it. And uh, it's disappointing. But you got to be able to move the ball that far. And and we did. And we, we stalled out more than, more than that time. And we get the ball pushed down in their territory, and we just we couldn't get a first down, and uh, and that's frustrating. But uh, we, we had to we had to make a play there, and we did. They did, and, and then they hit a big play, and uh, you know that's that's one of the things I talk to our team about all the time. Is you got to execute on third down. It didn't have to be a fourth and short. You could execute on third down, and made third down, and you kept driving like you didn't. And then I talk about big plays. We gave up a big play right there on that pass play over the middle, and uh, and then we gave up a big play to start the second half on the kickoff, where you turn it back out to the fifth. And you do a very good job leveraging the ball. And, uh, big plays make a difference, and both of those were, were costly to us. They both uh, resulted in points, uh, one for seven points and one for a, for a field goal. Did you uh, consider changing the play after they called the timeout, um, after the quarterback sneak the first time? Is there any thought to that? Well, we talked about a lot of different plays. Um, but you know, it's man on man. And you've got to block them. There aren't, there aren't any plays that we have that you don't have to block anybody. I wish I had some of those. If anybody's got any of those, I'll take them. But you got to block somebody. So if you got to move the ball that far, the length of that paper, well, 
It's you against the guy across from you. Knock him out of there. We didn't do it. Credit to them, they knocked us back. And uh, they didn't uh, didn't feel like we had crossed the, the, the line of the game and it was their ball. Coach, why was it hard in the first half to get the offense on track so that you could take advantage of the momentum you had after the block punt? I think it was for the same reason that it was difficult for them to get going on offense. We both know each other's offense is pretty good. And we've had three weeks to prepare. They've had two weeks to prepare. We practice against ourselves. I'm sure they do too. And they have a great plan. And they've been running that defense now for 12 straight years. And Buddy does an awesome job. He's a heck of a coach. And, uh, and the bottom line is it's just you got to sustain blocks. And, uh, and there were times that we did that, moved the ball, and other times we didn't. And uh, it's, it's frustrating to have to plow and, and, and go in three and four yards. And when you get a no gain play, which we had some, when we didn't gain any yards, it was second and 10. Uh, in a game like that, it's tough. So we continue to, to do some different things and get some different formations and find some areas where we felt like we had an advantage. And I thought throughout the game, we found spots where, where we could run the fullback and have some success. We got the ball uh, on the perimeter a couple of times. And the quarterback carried the ball in the midline a couple of times. And, but uh, you know, it's, it's difficult in a game where two teams are so similar. And I feel like closely matched in terms of our guys, their guys, uh, and, and, and they know they know the actions and angles of our offense because they see it all the time. So uh, we knew it was going to be a slugfest from start to finish. We prepared for that, and unfortunately, we just didn't make enough first downs to keep the ball moving and get get us in position to score. So, do you consider taking them eight to the fourth quarter progress for the third game? No, I, I don't know. I, we want to win the game, and there's, there's no, I didn't have the feeling we want to play good, and we'd feel all right if we played good, and, and we're getting a lot closer. And there was only one goal, and that was to win, and I thought we were going to, and uh, I'm disappointed that we didn't play, and uh, we've got a lot of work to do between now and next year. We're going to have a chance to beat them next year. How much did you work on that onside kick with Nick Jones? Was he the one onside kick with you and your guy? He's been the guy all year. And, uh, we, we, we work on it every week, uh, a couple times a week, prepared for that, as we do the handstand. And uh, you can come out to practice, you know, I'm very involved in the special team. I try to cover as much as I can and make sure there's no situations that come up like that. When I'm <coughs> Thought he made a great kick and gave us a chance. And uh, we were a little bit late getting to the first guy from the sideline who, who recovered the ball. But I thought he did a heck of a job to give us a chance to, to get the ball back. Good, Rob. Coach, what would be your rationale for bringing AJ in the third quarter? Santiago was hurt. Well, was it? Was injured? He was injured. He couldn't play. Okay. Who would be injured? First play. Is it a question of the play? Was there a particular play where he heard it? I uh, know it's just toward the end of the first half. I don't know the exact play. Um, as we were going at halftime, I was informed that, that he was injured and that the medical staff was going to be looking at him. Um, they gave him some treatment and, and tried to you know, adjust the tape job. And, and uh, it just it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't it wasn't working for him. So we put AJ in and, and uh, let AJ do a really good job. Yeah, uh, that was uh, that was the paper. Coach, I think you had a nice uh, you know, coach from Montalolo after the game. Are you able to share you what know, Coach said? Well, oh, Kenny's my dear friend. And uh, you know, Kenny and I share a, a, a bond of friendship that's lasted 25 years. And it goes beyond just uh, a colleague working together. I mean, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a sense of brotherhood between me and I. And, uh, we were young assistant coaches together and worked for six years under Coach Johnson. And, and uh, I love him. And, uh, and just, uh, I'm so proud of him and the job he's doing. And, and uh, I know the feelings are mutual. I know that's a, uh, those feelings are shared by him as well.
So it's special to have that relationship with me and, and so many of those coaches on that staff over there. I mean, all those guys, and, and Ivan and Buddy and Keith Jones and Daniel O'Rourke, Chris Colton and Mike Brass and uh, Dale Pearson. I mean, those are, those are just dear friends of mine. So you know, it's, it's, it's tough to lose a rivalry game. And, uh, you know, the, the backyard brother, too, you, know, you want to go out and beat your brother in the backyard. And, uh, and that's a little bit of what this rivalry is like, like between Kenny and I. Any questions for Coach? Go ahead, Ken. Coach Keenan Rells had 100 yards rushing, uh, but the longest was 19 yards. Did you feel the defense did a, a, a good job in containing him as, through the game? I thought the defense did a great job. And, uh, you know, we got uh, we got a lot of stops, uh, not enough down the stretch. And, uh, we allowed him to convert some third downs. And I mentioned hit the big play right before halftime. Second half, with the ball at the 50-yard line, didn't mean they didn't score. They didn't do a great job there of uh, getting them off the board. They got three points, but I thought our defense really played hard. We missed some tackles, and, uh, and that's always disappointing to see when you got a guy stopped. And we had we had one more. We had the option to play pretty well and get the ball out there, and, and we had a tackle for a three-yard loss, and we whiffed, and uh, let the guy cut back inside of us. And, it was uh, second and six, and they converted the, the third down play. So you got to make those points, and, and, and that's the bottom line. It's just, it, it really comes down to fundamentals. You got to block and sustain blocks. You got to defense. You got to get off blocks. You got to tackle the guy and get him to the ground. You got to make some people miss or break tackles on offense and take care of the ball. And it's very fundamental, but that's that's what it comes down to. You look the game. That's probably what it came down to. Thanks for joining us, everybody.